The Springfield Museums are entering a new era. Jenny Powers, former Family Engagement Coordinator for the Springfield Museums, has been named as the Director of Science and is the first woman to hold this position in more than 70 years. Grace Pettis Johnson oversaw the role from 1910 to 1949 and has served as an inspiration for Powers as she transitions into this new leadership position. Zydalise Bauer spoke with Powers to learn more about her predecessor and to learn about her vision for the future of the Springfield Science Museum. I learned about her by reading a publication from the Springfield Science Museum that was an overview of how the museum was founded and how the collections expanded, and it was written by Grace. And throughout the entire book, you could tell how excited she was to share new things with the people in the city of Springfield. The collections came um, from all over the place. At that time, people could just sh ship specimens to the museum to be, expect to be accepted into the collections. Um, so she had part of the job of leading through them, picking which ones she thought were, would be best, which ones to display. And so she was an assistant curator for a long time. And then she eventually became director. While she was director, one thing that I absolutely loved was that she started the junior room at the Springfield Science Museum, which was the first ever program for children. Now, before we get into some of your history at the Springfield Science Museum, I know that for over 20 years, you've been a science educator. So tell me, how did your interest and passion for science begin? Well, I had a couple really good mentors, and one of them was a science teacher in Chicopee Public Schools, and I actually was a sub at the time, but she invited me to her classroom over and over, and I got to learn about the lessons that she created and how she really created ways for science to really stick in these kids' brains. It wouldn't just be something fun they walked in and got to do and leave. They really were able to absorb those concepts. And then I had a second science mentor who was the curator of physical science here at the museum. And he is the one um, that taught me to love astronomy. And it just became something kind of ingrained in me and a passion that I love sharing with other people. People have been so generous in sharing their knowledge with me. I'm excited to be able to present information in a really accessible, interesting way to the public too. For the past six years, you held um, the family engagement coordinator role at the Springfield Museums. What were some of the projects that you worked on in that role that has led you into having this new role as director? Well, every family program that we've ever done, no matter what the theme was, has integrated science into it. So whether it be the Dr. Seuss opening party, I got to plan the party for that. That was one of the best things I ever got to do. Whether it was that and where we compared real live cats um, or feline animal skins and talked about them being the cat in the hat's wild cousins, or whether we were getting to use real tools that scientists use, like microscopes. So all of those things, they're just so interesting and they're so fun. And there's no theme that doesn't work with science from wizards to rock and roll. Science is everywhere all around us. No, that's so true. I love that you point that out. Cause I mean, even talking about like the feline skins, I would have never imagined that, but it's nice to have that connection to cat in the hat and bring that together. And so with your experience on bringing all of this dynamic programming to the science museum, what is your vision um, on the direction that you would like to see the museum going um, now being the new director? Well, there's a few things that are top priorities for me. So number one is any new exhibit or any updated exhibit is going to be fully bilingual English and Spanish. We know that about 47% of Springfield is Latinx, and we really want people to not only be able to understand everything that they're able to see at the museum, but um, we encounter a lot of families that are um, teaching their children Spanish at home, and we want to support them as well. Um, some other things we're doing, well, you can never go wrong with more dinosaurs. <laughs> we're also upgrading our planetarium. That's something I'm really excited about. We have a new international space station exhibit opening that's going to enhance Astronomy Hall. Like I said, I, I do have a special passion for astronomy, but also dinosaurs. And then we have these amazing dioramas throughout our habitat and mammal hall. 
what we want to do with those is keep them because they are treasures, but we want to enhance them to create a more immersive experience. Something that's really important for you is, is creating a barrier free environment at the museums. So in addition to having bilingual exhibits, um, how else do you ensure that that it's very welcoming for, for people of all backgrounds? I've always heard that a good museum should be both a mirror and a window. So we want people to be able to find themselves in this museum. We know that every visitor comes in with some knowledge of science. So they should be able to find themselves. They should be able to feel empowered by recognition of concepts they already know. And then we should go deeper and let them learn even more. Another way that we're going to make sure that the area is accessible is by including things for people who have, may have low or no sight or other people with disabilities so that we make sure that they can access everything we have as well. For instance, we're talking about um, an exhibit that is all touch about nebulas. And we're also talking about a planetarium show that you don't need sight to enjoy. That's amazing. And I know that you also said um, that you love how the Science Museum offers simple and positive interactions. Um, and that's always what stands out to me when I visit. Like, it's always amazing that me and my six year old daughter can interact with the same exhibit and have the same level of engagement. So um, tell me, what is the impact that science can have on individuals, especially when you have accessible, interactive, hands on activities? Science can have such a wide variety of impacts from tiny things that help you go about your day in a more efficient way to inspiring people's careers. And so all of the, both of those things are really important. Learning science should improve your life in some way. So whether it's just turning off the sink while you brush your teeth, or whether it's being one of the next astronauts on the International Space Station, everything in between, science doesn't have to be a career, it certainly can, but science can also be just for pleasure. So even if we're improving your life just by having that time together, and that's one thing that our visitors value most, we know from evaluations that we've done, that just those times to be together are really, really important. The same way that you took inspiration from Grace Pettis Johnson, some young girl or young woman um, will look to you and is already looking to you um, as an inspiration. So what words of advice would you like to share? You don't have to know the direction that you want to go right away. I didn't take a direct path to get to this place. You can try lots of different things and decide what you want to do. And even when you make a decision, you don't have to do that the rest of your life. You can do what you want and you should be able to find ways to both work and in, in your life that bring you so much pleasure that you have a very happy life. That's, that's what I have managed to accomplish. And I hope that girls, other girls and women will be able to too. 